What's up everyone? Welcome to the next version of the 1vx Insane Challenges. Today we're going to be playing against two diamonds. And because there were so many diamond players excited to play, I'm going to be making this a best of three. Let's see if we can do it. All right, here we go. The first game is going to be against a Terran and Protoss. I made sure to get, you know, two different races because I love the variety. I'm not sure. I, I saw a lot of Protoss players in there. I didn't see a little Zerg, so I wonder if we can get a Zerg for the second game. Now, I do wonder what you guys think the score is going to be. I'm not sure. No, I am light green, right? Yeah, for some reason, it just looks a bit more yellow on this map. I, I'm going to blame the map for this one because I'm pretty sure the color is cool. Now, let me make sure I actually have the bars. So, like I said, we're playing Terran and Protoss, and I have to admit... Normally, I'm a bit more aware of the strategy I want to do. Here, I'm not so sure because diamonds are obviously going to be a lot harder to kill with just a couple Reapers compared to a gold or platinum player, uh, which is what I would normally do. I think that was probably not meant for the alt chat, but it is what it is. Now, Protoss is going to be good against Reapers. Terran is definitely a little bit of vulnerability. In any case, even if Reapers might not be as good of a strategy as against lower league players... I still love to have a little bit of pressure. And what, Oh, I didn't even realize this, by the way. One thing that's very nice for me, uh, just, just in case you guys are wondering, I chose a random map from the 2v2 ladder. Uh, I know this one from back in the day. But I forgot that I can take this base too. I was wondering how the hell I'm going to manage to expand because the expansion here is very open, big ramp that I can't wall. But obviously, uh, they're going to have to expand on a low ground, but I do get to take this base. I, I do think it would have been better for me if I spawned here because then I could have walled this Reaper Cliff. Or Blink Stalker Cliff, I suppose, could be used in multiple ways. So I'm going to go for two racks Reaper. I don't think I'm going to be making too many. I would guess I'm probably going to go for three or five Reapers, depending on what I see. I was tempted to SCV scout, but I think I'm going to skip that. Now, the only rule, just so you guys know, as always, is that they're not allowed to work a rush. Scouting obviously doesn't count as a worker rush. But they can cheese me or do whatever they want. A lot of you didn't believe me when I said I could hold multiple cheeses, but then I played against three Platinums. I think it was, or maybe it was four Golds. I think it was the three Platinums, and I managed to hold their cheese pretty comfortably even. So they're allowed to cheese me. They can counter rush, proxy reaper me, whatever they want, as long as they don't work a rush, because that, you know, it would kind of ruin the game a little bit. There's not that much you could do besides a move your own workers, and then, yeah, it's not, it's not the best. Now, there's a probe here, or it got recalled. Either way, uh, I don't feel bad about checking for it. Let's see. Can we find the probe? And there it is. Look, that is already a little suspicious, I have to say. It's potentially... Um, or it was potentially set up to make a pylon later. And if he was planning on doing that, he might already have set the plan in motion, right? So maybe he already went for a second gateway or a second gas, for example. So I do have to keep that in mind. I'm going to make a depot here just for vision against Reapers. Now, obviously, I'm going to have a good amount of Reapers of my own. Now, recently, the more of these challenges I do, the more people are, are playing mass Reaper back against me, which I think is really smart. Now, let's see who the first player is that we're going to find. There is... Oh, that's a pretty fast expansion, actually. Maybe I'll be able to do a little bit of damage. That is a Stargate. Not very happy about seeing the Stargate, I have to admit. Can I escape with this one? Probably with the grenade. There we go. We are going to escape. There's still... Uh, yeah, exactly. Terran units on the field, though. If I'm lucky, I can... No, okay. I was going to say, if I'm lucky, I can escape with everything. Instead, I'm just going to escape with... Uh, yeah, one of those two Reapers. So the Terran is playing multi racks Reaper. And this is kind of what I was afraid of. Like, these guys are going to be significantly better at defending their bases compared to uh, a gold player. And I'm playing against Stargate, which I already don't like playing against in 1v1. If you guys have watched my stream or often, you probably know that Stargate is my least favorite tech to go up against. I find it very, very difficult to deal with air units when you're trying to put on harassment. And so far, I would say we are significantly on the back foot. I mean, obviously... In a 1v2, you're supposed to be, but I was hoping we get a little bit more done than that. Here, there's nothing. There's a factory going down, which leads me to believe that Terran is doing a very similar build to me. Now, I think Oracles are going to be on the way, so I'm going to start making turrets in both my mineral lines. Can I out-micro this amount of Reapers? Probably not. I, I do think it was one less Reaper than I had, but combined with the SUVs, I don't think I really want anything to do with this. Now, since the Protoss player is not helping, I have to imagine the Oracles are on the way to my base. Or it's Phoenixes, but uh, I really think if his units were at home, he would be helping his teammates. So there is a Phoenix there. There's another Phoenix, which means one Reaper will be able to get some probe damage. The other one is going to get killed by that Phoenix. At least if he uses the other Phoenix to kill it. If he doesn't, we're going to get two Reapers alive. I mean, this is way more damage uh, than I was hoping for after that start. These Reapers are probably going to get out with that grenade. There we go. And that is a uh, pretty 
pretty good amount of damage done, really. I feel like that's more damage than I should have gotten after that start, so that's pretty great. And my 2 on 1 is also going to be faster than the Terran. And here you can already see, this is pretty cool comparison, by the way. This is a Diamond player who is doing the exact same build as me. I think he even made two less Reapers. And you can tell that I'm already way more advanced in my build compared to him. There's no SCVs here, uh, and that is really good news. Because dealing with drops, uh, that's going to be quite annoying. Man, I'm getting so much damage done with these Reapers. This is fantastic. He made a Cyclone. That makes me think we're going to go up against a more defensive play. Oh, I didn't quite get the target fire on that last one. Probably should have gotten that, so that's quite unfortunate. Now, this map, very important to note. Very big feature on this map. Let me show you in a second after I start my combat shield. Don't want to completely ruin my macro to show you guys. Is that I can siege behind this base. Okay, tanks are going to be a massive deal for both parties. But I think even more for me. And the reason I say that is that I don't have to take this base very fast at all. Oh, this doesn't seem like a, uh, a great situation. But we might get a Phoenix for it. Barely not going to get it. And that's pretty unfortunate, I have to say. Because his Phoenixes could have been anywhere. But instead, they were the only path that I decided to drop on. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to finish this game anytime soon with an attack. So I'm just going to go for a third base. Oh, these Reapers are uh, very far from forward he could deal with my marines if he would use his grenades perfectly so far not quite perfectly so that's quite nice for me oh he actually misclicked those i can kill the cyclone too marines are significantly faster not sure i want to go for that though maybe we can get a phoenix not quite gonna get it we are gonna get the cyclone barely not trade one medevac for the phoenix and now man i really want that cyclone it's just annoying me that it's so low hp it keeps getting closer and closer but it's still alive I mean, I, I think this is going into my favor anyway. This, this sounds kind of crazy to say, but I feel like they're both spending, even if they're two players, I think they're both spending a lot of attention on this, and my macro hasn't really faltered yet. So even distracting them, more so than taking good trades, is already a very good start for me. Now, my combat shield is finished. That means my army is going to be very strong. I'm going to start making turrets. Because I will get out multitask if I try to engage in that kind of game, right? If I try uh, to catch every drop and every harassment against two players, I just think it's going to go the wrong way for me. So I'm going to make sure to get turrets up in advance so I don't get dropped as easily. I mean, they could still just drop through the turrets. That is true, of course. But um, yeah, I, I, I feel at least a little bit safer with this, which is the point, right? I have one too many SUVs on that mineral line. Let's try to get perfect saturation everywhere. One one is coming. Let's see. I'm going to scan here. Okay, so it looks like we're playing against mech. I thought it was just a defensive cyclone at first, but it looks like we're playing against mech. I think that could be kind of nice for us. And the reason I say that is because typically against Terran... And th th this is a little bit more deep knowledge. I don't really see a lot of uh, lower league players apply this, but against Terran, you typically make no Marauders. Marauders are very... Oh, this is huge. There we go. Every single one. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Against Terran, you make no Marauders whatsoever because Marauders are just a worse Marine, basically, when fighting against other Marines. But you do make Marauders against Mech. Against Protoss, you want to make a lot of Marauders. So now I'm in a position where I can make the same army against both players, right? Just pure Marine. Not that good against stuff like Colossi. Uh, but now... I feel like I have a little bit more, um, yeah, I wouldn't say freedom, but it's just going to be easier for me to make a lot of units because I can make the same units. There's a tank over there that seeds in range of my one tank, which is great. I'll let him shoot my marines. There we go. Not even going to get that, actually. And this is what I was talking about. This is such an annoying position for him uh, to deal with. He might have to come around. Look how many workers are going to die here. The third base is flying towards the third now, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I already have my third base saturated. That is just a big part of the damage I did early. And I feel like I'm doing a really good job here crippling the Protoss. Now, that could be a big enough army. I didn't see if there was a Colossus there. If there's a Colossus there, no, it doesn't look like it. Okay, then it's not going to be a big enough army to clean me up. So I can just stay here forever. I mean, I think this Protoss, he, he could have a third. Okay, it, it's true. At this point, he could have a third, but I think he might not. And in that case, I'm literally just cutting his economy in half, which is crazy. Now, he's not mining at all from here anymore, so I'm going to move away. Yeah, he might not realize that I'm going the other way because he didn't have any spotters there. So let's cancel those mid effects to start 2 2. I'm going to gather my army up together. I have four tanks here and a bunch of mid effects, which is a very significant army. I'm going to take the fourth base there. Okay, let's see. I want to know what's over here. There's a, a couple tanks, but not that many, really. 
I'm not sure if I should be overconfident here, but I feel like I can totally go for this. Here we go. I'm going to CC tanks one by one. I just need to make sure I target the tank first, and then I can back off to my own seat tank here. This fight is insane for us. The tanks are getting so much value. The battery overcharge in the back is doing a lot of work. Let's see if I can target those liberators before my marines die. I think barely not. Okay, we did get one of them. That's quite nice. In the end, a relatively even trade. I feel like both of us lost the entire army, so I'm not really going to complain about that too much. I'm going to start making turrets on this side as well. Uh, I, I did wish that would have gone a little bit better, but in the end, I really think it was it was decent, I would say. It could have been better, but it was decent. Maybe it would have been smarter for me to take this base, but I don't really like having to go all the way around like that. Obviously, I couldn't cut the corner uh, because then I would have, you know, just got an attack over here and that would have been nasty. Let's see. Okay, the army is still at home. I haven't been arrested yet by Liberators. That maybe surprises me the most. I think a Liberator is going to come at some point. So I'm going to make one turret over there. That might be in range to shoot down a potential Liberator. I'm going to get my fourth base up. At this point, I am slightly behind in economy in total. But not as much as I should be. So I think I've definitely progressed on my situation from the start. This should most likely be a planetary. There's an Observer on the army. And I don't like being spied on. So we're going to take care of that. Now, is it time for me... Okay, that's a lot of turrets. Hmm. I, I, I was thinking about dropping into the Protoss main base, but if I drop here, it's possible, by the way. Dropping over turrets is not necessarily a bad idea. But it's all about efficiency, right? Like, if I drop past the turrets, I will be locked up there. Like, I won't be able to leave, and that is something that could be problematic later on. Now, how I have 70 SCVs. I don't think I can make more. I would like to make more, but the thing is, don't forget, I... I'm going up against two armies, right? So I need a lot of army supply. Okay, this is clearly a Terran trying to take that base over there. Uh, I can not fight this, but I can bait him into a battle. That's the thing. Oh, look. Okay, so many Marines going down every shot. This is beautiful. I do have to... Can I save this Liberator? Maybe barely? Okay, if I save this... This Liberator could do an insane amount of damage. It's very important to save everything you can. That planetary is going to fall now. And overall, this has been very, very good for me. Now I'm going to take that cursed base that I didn't want to take earlier. He's blinked forward one stalker to bait the tank shots and then decided it was probably not that great of an idea after all. Ah, oh, no, he had one Phoenix. I would have loved it if that one freaking Liberator just popped off and killed that entire base. Now let's get some extra gases. What the ar okay, the army is still here. That's important to know. I thought maybe the army would be counter-attacking me already. But for now, it looks nice. Okay, that is just an orbital, actually. I can just go and kill that. I kind of imagined that would be a planetary without even looking. Now I need one more depot for, for supply. Looks like... Okay, they were trying to attack into me, but that is just going to be a bad idea. They need some bigger stuff like Liberators, for example. Okay, these Liberators are going to absolutely pop off. And now is the time for me to make a move because I am maxed out. Um, if I wait longer, that means the other players are going to climb in supply. And obviously, I do not want that to happen. So I'm going to go for a drop here. I feel like there might not be as many turrets on this side as there were on the other. I'm going to get a couple extra barracks up. Man, I killed so many probes. That harassment was fantastic. I'm going to start making ghosts just in case. Uh, mostly for the Protoss army. If the Protoss army gets too big, it gets very scary. Okay, I'm just going to go into the main base because I think that is the most distracting. And I'm going to siege over here. What is? I, I saw something. I don't know. Okay, it's just one siege tank. That's nice. We're going to kill one tank pretty much for free. That is awesome. I have two tanks siege here in the back, which I don't want. And now we're going to get a really nice drop going. This is super distracting. Like, I know it might not do an insane amount of damage, but it's super, super distracting. Now, if the Protoss player doesn't pay attention here, he's going to get this entire mineral line toasted. Oh, no! The vision just ran out. Oh, my God. That is so unfortunate. Okay, that is a few more SCVs, which makes me believe that there is a base on the bottom middle. Now, what are the upgrades on these? He has plus two upgrades. His upgrades aren't that great. Like, I really think I can probably just uh, stim through this for the most part. I do want to take it careful. Okay, there's still a couple tanks up there. Now I'm going to siege. It looked like I siege late, but I think it's going to be perfectly on time, actually. The position obviously being very important. Now I can juke the turrets and go for a position like this. I'm going to try to get closer there as well. Now is the time where I get a couple more command centers to finish up my macro. Now, I feel like he retook... Yeah, exactly. I, I thought I saw some workers earlier, so he retook that base. I got a drop in the Protoss main. All of these pros are getting toasted, which is very nice. I don't think he can even run away with these SUVs at this point. I feel like their only hope now is to just converge on my main army uh, and try to kill it with one fell swoop. That is what I would do anyway. The command center goes down. I don't have reinforcements, but I think it's mostly because I've just been maxed all this time. Now, I really want to push a little bit more forward but it is definitely risky i'm just gonna 
put a couple tanks on the high ground over here. There's a drop in my main, uh, and that is where the turrets finally came into play. I'm going to send these guys back. Try to saturate this base. Make a couple more command centers. Actually, should be quite nice. And now I just kind of have to wait for them to attack in. The moment they attack in uh, is the moment I attack with my entire army as well. Now we are at a point where my economy is better than the opponents for the first time. That is pretty crazy. Now maybe I could get two more tanks up in this high. This high ground is disgusting, by the way. If you get that high ground over there, like it's 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 gross, right? Absolutely gross. Let's see. I'm just going to drop these tanks over here. And then this entire economy is going to be denied as well. Maybe I could put one tank. Okay, they wanted to go for it, decided not to. Maybe I could just put one tank here to deny that economy while uh, my opponent is distracted. There we go. Is he attacking in? They're not quite attacking in yet, but I feel like they're getting closer and closer to actually attacking in. Now here, we're going to be able to kill a bunch of... Okay, he did uh, pull the tanks. That is a good move. Now, is it time for me to go in for the attack yet? Uh, I'm not so sure. It feels a little risky, to be honest. Like, keep in mind, they have double reinforcements, basically, right? So if I do lose my army, then all of a sudden I won't really be able to reinforce it. I do have better upgrades, though, that's for sure. One thing is going to unseat... Oh, two tanks on siege. Okay, then we're going to go for it. Try to kill all of these tanks right away. I killed two tanks. That is a really, really nice trade. There aren't that many tanks from their side. I think it was roughly six tanks in total that were there. And I just killed two of them, which obviously is a pretty big amount. Now the tanks are all... Okay, this is going to be big. It's not my time to move in. The tanks are all over there on the high ground, which is going to give me a lot of space to take over this base like this. He can't blink forward. I know he's tempted, but he simply can't. If he blinks forward... Oh, okay, that is going to be painful. And that is also my cue to go for it, because all those stalkers are now vulnerable. Let's see if I can kill the tanks. I need to do a decent job splitting, so I don't get obliterated by the sea tanks it's pretty close here but i would say we're barely gonna break through that tank falls now i'm gonna bring my own tanks in as well and it seems like we have won the first 1v2 and that's gonna put me up 1-0 in this best of three now they obviously do still have a lot of units scattered because they were defending against drops and whatnot but at this point i mean i quite literally have a better economy than them right like by a significant amount this drop is gonna very sadly die to a third you can just feel it planetary is gonna take care of the units that did actually manage to drop out and I think after they have um, processed this loss, we will be seeing AGG very shortly. I, I don't really have a single unit of anti-air here, so that is quite unfortunate. Like, that Liberator could kind of pop off and just kill my entire army. I'm going to see these tanks over here, because I do think they retook that base in the top. I'm going to go for this final tank here, and then they will truly not have anything left. I think the Protoss has been bullied pretty much from the start, so I can't imagine the Protoss having any amount of economy. That's EMP the Orbital for good measure, and GG is called, and that is 1-0 in this best of three. And this was a very convincing game. I have to say, I'm impressed by myself. I play better than I expected to, but let's keep it up for game number two. All right, game number two in this best of three is going to be an Arctic Dream. I do like the Psycho maps, and I do know that this is the most Psycho map in a 2v2 map pool, so that's going to be very cool. I think we're playing against Proto Zerg, so a slightly different, you know, race composition than last game. And this is game number two in this best of three. I'm 1-0 up, so if we win this one, that's going to be it for the best of three. If they win this one, we are going to go to a rubber match to decide who wins. Now, I do hope that I win, because if I win, that means that 1v3 diamond is going to be up next. Now, why this map is psycho is because it's just very wild. Let me show you some things that you can do on this map. I know there's uh, one feature in particular that I really like to do with Protoss. Let me just make a depot first. You can literally blink into someone's natural from here. Like, it's not even, you know, you take your natural here and you can just blink over. And then you can blink in the other natural from there. Like, it's actually, oh, I shouldn't have rallied that SUV. It's actually a pretty freaking crazy map. Now, we're playing against Protoss and Zerg. I think I want to do something slightly different from the last game. I think I want to go more aggressive with the Reapers because there's a Zerg player. And I feel like Zerg, it's... On one hand, I think it's a little more vulnerable in the early game compared to Terran and Protoss. On the other hand... Uh, well, it's not. It's kind of the same argument, really, but Zerg is extremely strong if you leave them alone. So that's very dangerous in team games, right? Because if I would leave him alone, I'm sure he's going to macro up. I mean, anyone can make 66 drones if you leave them alone, right? And then, yeah, their economy is going to be insane, and we're going to be in a world of pain. So what I want to do here is I want to play three racks Reaper instead of two and then locate the Zerg and try to do as much damage as possible. And this, it doesn't have to be a crazy amount of damage, as long as I keep the Reapers alive. Actually, I'm going to make the third barracks after uh, the orbital instead. I don't want to make this too uneconomic. 
it's, it's always a balance. It's it's really fun, I have to admit. In case you guys don't know, I talk about it on my stream a lot. These 1vx challenges are my absolute favorite thing to record. It's so much fun figuring out exactly what to do. And the balance of how much you should commit to attacking and defending, it's, it's very hard to find. But what I think here is you can't really kill two people with just mass reapers. Uh, at least not right away. Maybe if I get ahead enough, then later. I mean, probably not, but who knows, right? I am me after all, and I, I do like playing with reapers. Oh, I do need an extra gas. But I want to play a little more economical, so I delay the third barracks a little bit, so I can still transition. Um, and if I do damage, hopefully end up in a decent economy still, right? That is the plan. Now, wait, I think that was an overlord. I wasn't paying too close attention, but I saw something, and I think it was probably an overlord, which would mean that the Zerg spawned on the left side. If this is the Protoss, that would be... Excuse me, that would be a lot more difficult for me to deal with. Let's see. Is it the Zerg? Yeah, okay, that is perfect. It is the Zerg that spawned here. Now, the Zerg does have a 100 gas mine very fast. That's going to be a little bit harder to deal with. Now, now you can see how hard it is to deal with these Reapers, guys. If you're not used to playing against, uh, you know, really high-level Reaper Micro, they are super, super annoying to deal with. No, I do need to make... Oh, I already sent that, actually. Oh, I out macroed myself a little bit. That sucks. You see, that's a very important thing there, right? I made a mistake back at home, which makes the Micro the other map way worse. So that is a, definitely a mistake. Maybe I was praising my own Reaper Micro too much because in the end I didn't really get anything done. Mostly afraid of that Stalker there. Though. The, the Queen we can kill pretty easily, but the Stalker, that's kind of terrifying. Now I hope he keeps the Overlord there because then at some point we're going to manage to kill it. Now what I need to keep in mind um, is that he got 100 gas faster than you normally would. And Zergling speed really just means the end of 3 Rax Reaper attacks. Now, this is the kind of damage I was talking about, guys. This is really nice damage over here. I'm going to end up losing a couple of these Reapers, but I think I killed 6 drones, which is awesome. If he doesn't target fire, we can get away with all of these. Oh, I can't jump out anywhere. Okay, that is slightly unfortunate. And I'm going to start making Stim, get a double reactor going. Um, and the thing I'm the most afraid of... As, this, as of this moment is a bailing all in. I mean, look at these juicy add-ons, guys. If you get bailing all in, I, I would probably cry. So I really hope that doesn't happen. Now, at this point, because of the gas timing, I'm sure the Zerg has Zergling speed. I still want to get some more damage done, though. I feel like by the amount of Stalkers the Protoss had, he probably played a normal one-gate expand, which means his economy is pretty good. Let me double check that gold base, actually. Oh, there's an oracle in my base. Oh, that's a little bit faster than I would have liked. Yeah, okay, this is the perfect moment. He's going to be distracted by his oracle. Uh, so I'm going to jump into the Protoss base and try to kill as many workers as I can. I imagine he has the base in the back. Okay, there's a void ray, but just like I thought, he's going to be distracted by his own oracle. And we're going to get a little bit of damage done, which is nice. That oracle is doing a crazy amount of damage, though, I have to say. Here we go. Let's try to kill more workers. I mean, in the end, I killed a lot of freaking workers here, too. I think that was like six workers going down or so. Uh, but I took way too much damage at home. Gonna lose one more Reaper, I think. Yeah. Ugh. And I think we're gonna be slightly on the back foot here. I already saw some people in the chat praying for me to lose so they would have the chance to play game three. And it's definitely looking a little bit worse than the last game was. That one Oracle caught me off guard. For some reason, I just didn't see it coming. Uh, I, last game, I was completely prepared for it. But here, I didn't see it coming. To be fair, I also didn't really have the tools to deal with it anyway, right? Like, I didn't have enough Marines. So, uh, it is what it is. But now we're going to have to uh, find a way out of this situation. I'm going to lower this depot so I don't get absolutely annihilated by a couple Zerglings running into my base. And now I'm going to have to do some damage with my two-on-one. Now, fair is fair. Even though the situation is rough, I did do a lot of damage with these Reapers, right? Like, I want to say that I killed close to 15 workers, most likely. Which is still more than the Oracle killed. I mean, I guess the Oracle probably... Maybe killed like eight or something. I feel like my supply was higher than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah, probably killed about eight. So, you could call that even. Terran usually wants to do a little more damage than the other races, though, because of Chrono Boost and Injects. Now, am I brave enough to move out without keeping units at home for the Oracle? That's the question, guys. Because my medivacs are about to finish. I saw a unit over there. That is probably the Oracle, right? Yeah, exactly. If I was him, I would really revelate. This is a thing every Protoss needs to do. If you have an Oracle and you can't find damage, always revelate the army so you can see it move. And another tip for my Terran players, okay? This is a very big tip. What I've seen before, even pro players used to do it every time. They would put a revelated unit in the medevac, thinking now it's not revelated. Uh, yeah, they just see exactly where your drop is going. So do not put a unit in the medevac. Un unless they patch it at some point. I wasn't paying attention to it. That is how it works. Now our drop... Ah, that sucks. I was going to say our drop got out unseen, but then the Zergling showed up. Now it's still going to be relatively difficult to deal with this. Void Race, by the way, 
fantastic unit for now, but later on they are definitely gonna suck. So that's an important thing. Let's see if I can do a little bit of out microing here. Yeah, this looks pretty good already, actually. There's a slow zone over there, by the way. So the Zerglings are going to arrive way later. I need to get out of here immediately because else I'm going to get absolutely annihilated by those Void Rays. Now, so far, I have to admit they're doing a really good job. Like, this is a very tough game so far. They are on a combined five bases. Maybe the Protoss is even taking their combined six base. They do have an army that you can snowball against. Like, they don't have any splash damage. The Zerg didn't seem to go for Bailings. The Protoss didn't seem to go for Colossi. So there is a chance I could do a push right now before they get too many Roaches out, and then we can do a lot of damage. The Zerg, if the Zerg goes for mass Roaches, I will applaud him. Like, it's not always the best strategy, but here, going for mass Roaches would be very, very good. It, it's just the... Roaches is a unit you can't really attack into. They don't scale well into the late game, but you can't attack into them very well. And since I'm clearly in a position where I have to do damage, you know, be being two base against six or something like that after all. Uh, okay, so that's going to be a stasis ward, I bet. I think he tried to put it, but it didn't work because he put it on an SUV. I think that is what happened. There you go. I uh, managed to dodge that decently enough. Now, let's see. Okay, there's no bailings here. Oh, this is a fantastic trade. You can't go in there with the Zerglings. He went in with the Zerglings too early. And now with these Zerglings too early, he hasn't been spamming Roaches. I think 50 Zerglings have already gone down. And the Protoss player also doesn't have, doesn't have an army that is fantastic against mass Marines. So this is a very nice position here. Let me try to get that Void trade. There we go. Another Void Ray going down. I might have to run away from this at some point, though. But if I can just bait more and more fights, that would be really, really nice. Let's see. I, I want to fight the Void Ray. The Oracle's targeting the tank instead of the Void Rays. That is not exactly what you want to do. I'm going to target that Void Ray. That's another Void Ray falling. And this attack has been massively successful. Now, I do definitely... Another Void Ray? Okay, I do definitely still um have to expand behind this like this is not enough damage that i can end the game with it but uh, i'm pretty happy with it the another void ray goes down as well they're not really sinking the army up very well they were doing fantastically defensively but at this point they lost a lot of units for free oh i already had a base well actually i kind of like this normally this would be pretty terrible to go for uh, a double base that fast but right now i'm kind of liking it because i don't think i have another push in me soon because they are going to be maxing out on roaches now at least i imagine road speed is on the way uh, and then i'm going to end up having oh that is a very bad siege both oh he had a bunch of queens afk that is that is pretty funny not gonna lie i mean i could have treated those liberators better but it is funny there were just like a million queens standing afk next to that hatchery okay so my army is pretty big uh, I am lacking medevac, so I'm going to start a couple more. And now I want to attack on the right side. I'm basically mimicking TVZ movement with Marine Tank as you would in like a, you know, a very high level match. What you want to do is you never want to attack through the middle. You always want to keep going on the outside and targeting their freshest base. Um, and even though, you know, half their force is going to be Protoss and I did deny a good amount of creep, I think it would be good for me to kind of stick to that formula. I mean, in the end, my micro or my macro is going to be pretty decent. I don't like my economic situation that much but it's all right now let's see gold base is it taken no gold base taken yeah okay i'm surprised they're not going for that by the way it's a very nice oh that is i uh clicked the control key on accident as i scanned now this base is pretty far away yeah okay this is a really nice pickup here we go the proto doesn't have that many void rays anymore that army looks pretty big but not big enough actually now the zerg is uh, trying to take that gold base as we speak i Okay, I was just going to say, I think the Protoss is going to go for carriers because I haven't seen new units in a while. And he did open with Stargate, but now I saw Zealots and an Immortal. So maybe it is going to be more of that, you know, mobile gateway style. Now, I'm just going to make both of these a planetary. I mean, I made them too fast or not too fast, but faster than normal, I would say. So I guess I could probably get away uh, going for multiple planetaries and just, you know, making extra SEVs. Right now, I have 63, which is uh, not really exactly where I want to be. Ideally, I would be above 70 already. But in the end, it's not the biggest deal. And what's really good for me is that they haven't killed these rocks. These rocks are an absolutely awesome place uh, for them to be able to surround us, but they keep not killing them. Here we go. Oh, that looks like burrow movement to me on those roaches. You can see it by the spikes on the skin. Uh, I don't think I'm mistaking it. So sometimes it could be a skin that you're just not used to, but I'm pretty sure that looked like burrow movement to me. Oh, I shouldn't have spoken uh, because they're, now they're killing the rocks, which I'm not a huge fan of. But I still think that is, this position is very, very good. Colossi are now out. Okay, that is not something I like to see. The Colossus being out is going to make this uh, very, very tough for me. Colossi are absolutely incredible against Marines. Like, better 
than you would ever expect. They are so good against Marines that I want absolutely nothing to do with them. Now, I think... No, I wanted to drop in the main base, but it's better if I just go for uh, the really big fight. Yeah, this fight looks absolutely awesome for us. None of the baitings are going to connect. I am going to lose the tanks for it, which means I have to back off. Because like I said, Colossi will annihilate my Marines. And now we're put in a slightly awkward position. I think I might have to do... And you guys, I don't even know if you guys have seen this before, but I might have to do a legendary Euthermal strat here, guys. I, I used to have a strategy, which I haven't done in ages, which was to play Bio and then just straight up switch to Mech completely. And the reason why I was doing it back then is because I really hated playing PvP late game. And here we're in a position where if I go for... Mar I need a little Marines to deal with the Zerg army. But Marines are going to be absolutely god-awful against the Protoss army. So maybe it's not a crazy idea to just go for uh, a ton of factories. Now, I do think I want to go for a counter-attack here, to be honest. So I'm going to go for that. I hope they don't attack because I... Uh, did just load up a ton of marines. I'm trying to appear strong here by stimming my marines forward. And then I'm going to send all of these uh, to their main base. But I do have a really good distraction going on. I got a liberator over there. I got a liberator onto the natural. Do need to make, be careful that I don't siege it on top of the cannon. And then these are all going to go into the main base. If I was them, I'd be very freaking tempted to attack now. Uh, because I have so many units out of the map. I have 60 supply of units out of the map, guys, which is incredible. Looks like the Protoss army is trying to get up there and now i will be able to kill the hive which is a huge deal the hive uh, can produce units such as vipers perhaps more important the ultralisk ultralisk would be super good oh there we go viper's gonna go down they will be super good at dealing with this mass marine stuff and now i'm not gonna go back keep in mind i want to play mech behind this so i'm okay losing a couple of these marines oh so now there's carriers out oh this game is getting very complicated i have to say guys because Mech really sucks against carriers, so now I don't know what I want to do anymore. Like, what exactly is the style that I want to go for when there's carriers on the field, but there's also Colossus and there's also a Zerg army. Now, I mean, if you can kill this... Oh, we're going to be able to kill that carrier? No, barely not. That is unfortunate. I'm just going to have to YOLO it. Let's try to get on top of the carrier. He didn't target the right medevac. Oh, we're getting so much done here, guys. Maybe I should go across with the rest of my army. Let's make sure to kill the pros over anything else. I still have that Liberator, by the way. I still have the freaking Liberator on the Protoss third base. And I'm going to go back to this base. Did the Zerg move his army again? This time he didn't. But this is still... A really, really good distraction here. I'm going to drop these here now. This Liberty is still absolutely popping off. Here we go. And this is going to be a good enough trade. Like, I don't think I'm going to win the fight, but it's going to be good enough for sure. Let's make sure to siege uh, these tanks in a big line as well as the Liberators. There we go. Maybe the Protoss now stop paying attention so I can go back over there. That would be very nice. And now I'm going to start a couple extra command centers. I'm gonna kill these. I don't see the scary Protoss army yet. Like, I see it's there. Now, I also have the drop in his base again, which is really nice. Oh, these tanks are gonna do so much damage to those roaches. That roach ball took a very rough fight. And then he was fighting uh, through the slow zone with those zealots, which is also really nice. Now, at this point, the Protoss has virtually, you know, no economy, I think, unless he did manage to sneak that gold base, which is a possibility. Now, you can tell that my supply is quite low. I did go for the mech switch, which is obviously very expensive here looks like that liberator is finally gonna fall uh, these marines are gonna win this fight by the way because these marines have upgrades and these void rays don't and void rays suck against marines on top of that he's gonna lose two void rays for this which is absolutely amazing and now i can go back to the zerg base these marines are meant to just stim on top of something without medevac these are basically suicide marines over here and now i'm back into the zerg base they must be getting absolutely crazy of my multitasking right now because they are struggling to keep up with all these moves maybe we'll be nice yeah i have a couple more liberators that could be nice i'm gonna see those in the zerg base and now i'm gonna try to take care of this base. oh really good reaction there i have to say i think i'm gonna try to just target this base like these marines like i said uh they are pretty much done i don't think i'm really gonna be able to save those so i might as well just try and kill that hatchery and there we go the hatchery goes down which is really nice and maybe I can save these and come back to another base later. Now, let's try to take this base over here. I think I'm just going to try to take multiple bases at once. So, if they deny one or two of them, I will still have a lot behind it. I think that could be quite nice. Uh, you go over here, maybe. And then this Liberator can siege this base. I think it's barely going to survive. So, depending on how much attention he was paying here, uh, he might not quite be countering these. Let's see, these Marines, maybe I can actually sneak them over here. Do I still need Medivacs? I guess a couple Medivacs would be nice, because I, I am still making Marines after all, right? So, 
Okay, that looks like a big Zerg army outside of my base. This one is gonna fall, uh, seems like, but that is okay. Looks like they're gearing up for a big attack here, right? So now, these Marines, they were saved, and they're actually gonna get value to at the end, which is absolutely incredible. I'm gonna send a Liberator here as well. These Liberators did a really big amount of damage. I'm, I'm very terrified of those carriers. I do have to say that, guys. Those carriers is really not something I want to see. Maybe I can send another bio run by uh, to the other side, like to, towards the bottom here. I'm trying to make Thors. I don't have that much supply available, though. So I'm going to go up to six bases. That is very nice. I'm going to try to repair this command center as well. This medevac is spotted, but that is fine. Let's see. Are they still here? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm very glad that that Swarmos looks like a mistake, by the way. Swarmos are so good against mech. I, I I would be absolutely terrified. Oh, he's going to attack in here. Yeah, he's giving me a good trade. That's exactly what I want. I mean, I have a lot of money. I know I'm not supposed to be the guy with money, but I do have a lot of money. So I'm completely fine uh, getting some of those pretty good trades. Even if it's not amazing right now, I'm okay with getting pretty good trades. I'm going to try to kill this base as well. And that is going to give me another opportunity to move out here. Oh, there, there's no bailings left. So this is going to be a decent trade after all. Like normally... You know, fighting on the creep is always going to be pretty awful. But if there's not a single bailing, it's going to be quite nice. Okay, so I have a couple of medevacs here that I didn't want to have. I'm going to try to siege this base once more. I don't know how many carriers there are. Or if it's just one, then I'm going to be pretty happy. I'm going to throw these two widow mines over here. Oh, that medevac accidentally didn't move it. I mean, there's not... I don't think there's any bio units here whatsoever, so I don't think I really have to be upset about it. And here we go. That Colossus is going to get deleted instantly, which is nice. This is a Finnish planetary, so that planetary is going to do absolutely fantastic for us against those units. It's not going to win, but it's going to do good enough. And keep in mind, I have another planetary. Man, these Thors are doing amazing. They're just Colossus. Colossus are not good against Thors at all, by the way. And it does look like we're about to face a counterattack. I mean, I have a lot of units here. Plus the planetary, don't forget. So I think we're going to be pretty okay. Thor's also really good at chasing Colossus because they activate the anti-air attack. Here we go. He's going to use the bailings on the left side. There's still a lot uh, of units here. I have another Thor coming out. I think we are going to be able to stop this. Though it is looking more questionable by the second that Colossus goes down. Man, those Colossus are getting absolutely owned by that Thor. Look at that. It's just one Thor shooting it at the moment, but it's just disappearing. The probes are going down as well. Oh, it does look like we're losing this base, which I don't want. He's using the freaking Zerg ability that you never ever see. Well, I don't even I don't remember what it's called. Something Cloud? Shroud? Oh, Microbial Shroud. That's what it's called. It's, it's so rarely used, I literally couldn't remember the name of the ability. Now, we are trading really well with those bio units against the Ravager here. We did lose a good amount of economy and units for it, though. Like, I lost the base in the middle, which is obviously undesirable. I do think the Protoss is pretty much out of units at this point. Like, I really feel the Protoss doesn't really have that much left. There we go. Another Colossus is going to fall to those awesome Thors. I did have them on the wrong mode, so in the end, uh, they didn't really do exactly what I wanted to do. But that's all right. That looks like a lot of Roach Ravager to me. Can we kill that Void Ray? Barely not. The Protoss is just spamming units into me. Let's see. Oh, I haven't checked the bottom left, I think, for a while. Do I have Medivacs here? I don't have Medivacs. You might be wondering why, but Medivacs are pretty nice at micro units. Yeah. Oh, that's probably too many Zerglings. I'm going to go up this ramp and just try to target the Ravagers. Yeah, in the end, that was a pretty good fight. Here we go. Let's start attacking that carrier. It's just one carrier. He's attacking too early with that. And the Thor is almost killed instantly. There's no base in this bottom left over here, which is super... Oh! We did find a base. Never mind. There we go. That is awesome to find. Void Rays, however, very good against Thors. And I, now I'm going to have to try and get away with these. I do like that they attempted to take these, but I did find it in time. Now, I have to say, guys, I am running out of units. I think it might be smarter for me to stop making mech for a little bit and go back to bio because they don't have that many units that are good against bio. If you look at the base situation, they don't have that many bases. I'm going to try to take this one again as well. Oh, can I save that? Probably barely, I think, if I dodge the bios. There we go. And I'm going to use this to drop into their main. I feel like the multitasking was so good for us earlier. Maybe you can use that multitasking some more. I don't really have SCVs left, by the way. Oh my goodness, 45 SCVs. That is absolutely tragic. Let's see, I'm going to use a few of these. Wait, that Liberator survived all this time? Oh no, I guess there was no base there left. I was wondering, how, how was that Liberator still doing work? Now I have a lot of units, uh, a lot of tanks in particular, so I can use those to attack the right side again. Especially because now I actually have Marines to deal with uh, and 
with or with air units, right? So that's nice. Now, Thors are very good against Queen. So even though this Thor is one HP, oh, it's barely not gonna win. Okay, I thought it was barely gonna win to be honest. Probably a little overconfident there in my big boy Thor, but it's all good. Now this base is not taken, which is really nice. I'm gonna get another drop going, or maybe I can just send this squad. Could be a decent idea to just send that squad over there. That is a carrier that's gonna die, which is very nice for us. There we go. That is a dead carrier. I know he has a couple void rays. Besides that, I feel like he doesn't have that much. Yeah, the, the Protoss really doesn't have anything. I think I might have just killed, like, all of his probes. Now, there's a lot of bailings, which is scary. But I just have too many tanks at this point, I think. As long as I'm sieged, we're going to be completely fine. And every time he gets close, he's going to lose units to the tank shots. Yeah, the Protoss is trying his best with his last Void Ray that he has. I also have a lot of Marauders, which are obviously uh, going to do a pretty good job tanking against the Bailing. So I'm going to kill that Hatchery now with just a couple of units that I had left. I did get... Yeah, I did get Kukasu Cell at some point. Okay, that is very nice to see. Thought I forgot it for a second. Now, the Zerg is going to move in, but all my tanks are seized. I kind of baited them in this position. Pretty good Biles, but they don't quite get the job done. That Hatchery dies, uh, which is very, very nice. Now, I think with these Marines... I can probably go into the main. Uh, I don't want to be trapped by the Zerg, but the thing here is, is that my tanks are covering the ramp and I have everything here to tank. The Protoss calls GG, and I think that might be it. This game was incredibly close and very... I freaking love this game. This game was awesome, super competitive. It didn't look like I was going to do it at some point, but now looking at my supply, SCV count back up at, what did I say, 68. And I think we are going to win this best of threes. And both these games were freaking awesome, I have to say. Now he's going to clean me up one more time, whether it's going to be clean enough of a cleanup that... I don't really think so. I got reinforcements as well. There's a Thor just hard chilling there. Now, these Marines are barely going to lose. Kind of need my uh, my tanks here to actually get the job done, I think. But yeah, I don't think he realizes that my supply is actually quite high. But look at that one Thor just going ham on those Vipers. That is beautiful. Can we kill a Viper? Almost killed a Viper with just that one Thor. I'm in one of the Zerg's last remaining bases. I'm splitting my tanks so he can't blinding cloud them all. And even an Abduct is not going to save him here. There we go. I'm stemming forward. The last buy unit is no chance from the second guy don't think he meant it that way and we 202 diamond players and that's fantastic if you look at the resource loss this was an absolute brawl okay 34k against 60k 24 minute non-stop action and this was one of my favorite challenges yet this was absolutely epic i think the next one i'm going to do is probably going to be 1v7 against silver plus bronze so that's going to be exciting hope you guys really enjoyed it make sure to give the video a like subscribe to the channel and I'll see y'all for that next one adios